Hello to lovers of the beautiful game and welcome to a new look and feel to the best preview show in Mzansi. I am Cesar Mabena, proud to be in your company. And uh, of course, this is Game On on SABC One. Plenty to talk about as uh, Kaiser Chiefs, of course, respond to a derby loss by winning a Soweto derby. For Orlando Pirates, they struggle for consistency as uh, the uh, league season does continue. And uh, of course, we have to talk about Cape Town City. Uh, they have hit six of the uh, best, a six match winning run, their best running season, or their best winning run of uh, the, uh, the their history in the uh, PSL so far, whilst Mami Lodi Sundowns, the kings of South African football, and dare I say African football, while well, they come back and come back to where they'll feel they belong, which is right at the top of uh, the long standings in the DSTV Premiership. Now, it goes without saying, goals make the world of football go round and round. And the two gentlemen that are in my company, they've done their bit to ensure that the beautifully South African game kept spinning over the years, scoring goals. And these are the legends that sit beside me, of course, in Shane McGregor, Kaiser Chiefs legend, the youngest man to um, promote a team from the first division to the top flight of South African football. And of course, Jerry Skosana, the last player to score in a Soweto derby in, well, the way of a hat-trick. Gentlemen, uh, a good time to be alive, great season so far, and a lot happening. Very much, much going on. You know, <laughs> we have a look at it, sundowns once again, where yeah. they should be, uh, where they always have been, uh, mm. top of the log. It's a little bit of a, a problem for the rest of the teams, you know. Four games in hand, two points clear. Uh, who's going to catch them? Yeah, Jalan, I have to ask you, uh, for sundowns, away for a couple of months, come back, play one game, back at the top of the log standings. What's that, Alan? Yes. Yeah. But I think um, it's, it's a challenge to the rest of the other teams in the PSL. I think if Sundowns can go out and still come back and be on top of the log mm. with four games mm. in hand, I mean, it says a lot. And if, if I'm at Pirates, I'm competing against Sundowns. What is it that I tell myself? I need to go pound for pound. I need to make sure Sundowns also suffer what we suffered. But if they let them lose, obviously what happened last season, I see it happening again. Okay? We are going into an interesting time, though. Uh, Shane, Sundowns, they're busy schedule uh, locally in the league, cup competitions, the African travels, which have already started this season, including the Champions League, which resumes now uh, in, in this current period we're going into. Uh, do you see that as a bit of a problem uh, for Sundowns and maybe some good news for those that are in the chasing pack? I don't see it as a problem. You know, the, I know he doesn't like rotation, mm -hmm. um, but that's... If you look at their squad, they can do that. So, I mean, they've got the players. He, he can bring in uh, five, six players, and he's not weakening the team. So that's the big thing. You know, he's got players coming back from injury. Ribeiro got a goal in the week, uh, during the week. No problem to them. Uh, uh, they are so strong, and uh, it's just a matter of, of him putting out the right team every week. And when he makes a substitute, and you have five subs, you're not weakening the team. You're actually <laughs> strengthening the team. So sure. they've got no problems. But I think, again, Shane, if you look at how does it keep all these players happy? Mm, because whoever that comes yeah. in is still giving the same yeah. performance that he really needs. So I think also yeah. credit needs to, to talking go about to him. that. Talking about that, Joe, I think he made a mistake last season by not rotating, by not bringing players and giving them a chance. Because there's yeah. a big difference between playing, yeah. match fitness, and you'll know, yeah. sharpness, whatever. So when you're giving everyone a chance, you're keeping that sharpness. So I think he made a little bit of a mistake last season by doing it, but he does realise now he has to rotate. And uh, I can't see anyone touching them, not in the PSL. Well, so far, the one side that's looking to touch them or trying their best to do so uh, is uh, Cape Town City. We have to talk about them. What's Tinkler getting right down at the uh, tip of the uh, continent? How is he able to somewhat try and keep up and put up a fight? Look, you, you give credit to him because of the kind of players that he have. I think the, the winning attitude that is put into the players. If you look at uh, the Mayos and uh, the, the, the way they play, you know, they, they're not giving away so many goals, mm. even though they, they're not scoring that much. But 1 0, 2 1, those give you three points. I think that's what took them to the top of the log the last time when Sundowns were not there. You know, but now obviously Sundowns uh, uh, back on top and four games. And we and mustn't forget about Cape Town. Yeah. They nearly fired Tinkler. He was yeah. going through yes. that bad patch yes. where he was no, struggling. They kept facing him and now he's repaying the faith. You know, one thing about him is he gets the best out of his players. He's similar, similar to Gavin Hunt. Um, mm. They get the best out of their players. They don't have the biggest squads. They don't have so-called best players, mm. but he gets the best out of each player, and that's the difference. Let's shift over to the, well, midway point of, this, uh, of, of the table, and who would have thought 
uh, Kaiser Chiefs on one side of the line, on the right side of the line, of course, just inside the uh, top eight. Orlando Pirates just outside of that with a couple of games in hand. Um, a bit surprising, Chiri Uti, here these two major clubs, and uh, they're struggling at the middle of the table at this, as we approach the middle of the season, really. If you don't look after your house, you'll always suffer because there are a lot of things that are happening inside these two clubs. Yeah. They might be the, the big giants of South African football, but it tells the way they are now on the lock. I mean, if you look at Pirates, you know, down at number 11, if mm. I'm not mistaken, and then you look at also Chiefs struggling, uh, except the, the derby win that they got against Swallows, the three points that they got. But I think and feel that there is a lot that is happening inside those houses of both clubs. Now, I have to ask you gentlemen quickly, as uh, we look to uh, end this first segment of the show, uh, this December is a little different. We play through December, something clubs have to get used to. Uh, Shane, I'll start with you. Uh, what changes now in how you approach the middle of the season and going forward beyond that? Well, for me, I hope the, the players' mindset changes. We all know South African players, it comes December, they want to go on holiday. Yeah. That's got to change. And uh, this is where strong coaches are going to come in. You've got to have that mindset. You've got to be able to change the players' mindset. If they don't, clubs are going to be in trouble. Mm, and from, the, from a coaching point of view? Besides that, maybe, Cesar, if maybe I had to come to Shane's, what he just said now. You, you, you look at 97, when Shane, the season was changed from... January to November, yeah, and then and it was, yeah. you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's how difficult it was for yeah. us as players. So just because I know December, I'm done, I'm going to enjoy myself, and that's it. But now it's worse because they have to go through the whole of December. And you know what's happening in the festive season in mm. terms of players, you know, the temptations, going out. But I think what Shane is saying, the character of coaches will bring the best out of the players and also the discipline part of it will also play a big role. It certainly will play a big role, and I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great festive season for us football lovers here. As we know, we'll be enjoying football right through the month of December and won't be uh, taking a break. So lots to look forward to. And I'll tell you what, lots to look forward to and game on as well as we return on the other side of this. Check these guys. Yeah. Let's show them how we that. I see it. Let's have a bath. Your feet like this. Let's see how you play. Your feet like this. Welcome back to uh, Game On and uh, uh, SABC One. And uh, well, we've had a great show up to this point discussing the uh, local game and as far as the uh, DSTV Premiership. Time to keep things moving as uh, we look ahead at uh, what will be coming on uh, in uh, the uh, days to come and exciting times, of course, in the uh, calling uh, knockout. Gerana, I'll start with you. Semi final time now for E. Richards Bay. They've got their struggles in the DSTV Premiership. It's Stellenbosch, seven without a loss so far. Um, and here they are facing each other in the FA semi-final? Yeah, if you look at their history, when they were still in the NFD, Richards Bay had the upper hand mm. over the Steelers. But now you look at the PSL lock in terms of their standings. You've got the Steelers right on, top, on the top eight and Richards Bay struggling down there, but both teams in the semi-final. So for me, I think I'll, I'll go with the Steelers in terms of edging out uh, uh, Richards Bay. Even Ten. though they, they're playing away from yeah, them, yeah. That, that would also be a big factor. Well, what do you make of the fact that Richards Bay, Richards Bay have played all the games at home so far? Stellies have played all the games away so far. Luck of the draw, you know, and, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Stellenbosch doesn't worry them. If, if you look at the, the one thing here, uh, Richards Bay have come into form of late. So, mm. um, you know, they've got a new head coach in. Um, uh, let's just say head coach. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure what it is, but anyway, senior coach. Yeah. Senior coach. Um, they have turned around, but I'm, yeah. I'm with Jerry. Uh, I can't disagree. I think Stellenbosch, they haven't won a semi final. It's the third mm. semi final they've been in. I just feel Steve Barker will get it right this time. They'll go through to the final. First another, final. Another huge game to look forward to Amazulu, TX Galaxy. Of course, for Amazulu, we know about the uh, sad passing, the untimely passing of Ubong uh, Ngozi Nduli. They're playing for him, the players. That's their inspiration going into the semi final. Whilst for TX Galaxy, well, they're selling players, but they're still 
right up there with the best of them in punching with the best in this cup competition. Shane, I'll start with you. How do you see this game playing out? You know, Emma Zulu have, have turned it around. And like I say, they're playing for the player, um, you know, the late player. And you know what? They have, they have seemed to have found a newfound energy. I think looking at that, Mm -hmm. And just the way TFs Galaxy got rid of players over the, the years is going to catch up with them sooner or later. Mm -hmm. I've got to go with them as earlier. Now, Jerry? Well, uh, if you also look at the luck that goes with the TS Galaxy, but this, I would also feel sorry for the players of Amazulu because of the statement that the club has put yeah. to say they want to play for a bong in Kosintulu, may soul rest in peace. But I, I see TS Galaxy coming with a surprise in this one. You know, they, they love a, a costume surprises, and especially when they are away from home. So on this one, I, I I'll differ from my colleague. I, <laughs> I think I'll go with TS Galaxy win. Okay, well, we, we're uh, going to have a coke on that one, so I'll just bring okay, my coke okay. next week. Well, right. we'll, we'll, we'll remember this moment, and of course remind them of this moment come next week when you watch Game 1 once again. Let's look abroad now, gentlemen. Interesting times, and um, the most uh, fun part of watching the English Premiership is it's competitive right now. Yeah going into an interesting December period. Arsenal, uh, what a performance last night, 6-0 against Lance. Man City coming back from two down to beat uh, Leipzig 32. It's really interesting when you see them playing so well in the Champions League and coming back to focus on the Premiership chip. You, 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 you look at the uh, log standings. Yeah. Uh, I, I was uh, like checking on the top six. You know, you look at Arsenal, I think they've got 30 points. You look mm. at Man City, they've got 29. Aston Villa is coming at 28, Tottenham at 28, mm. and I think Man U at 26. So you look at how close it is and how competitive it is. But the most important thing that you, you always look at in the PL, you, you, you are spoiled for goals. Yeah, when you, cool. watch the, you watch the PL, you know there will be some spectacular goals that you, 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 uh, you will see. Look at the goal of a Canacho, mm. you know, Ooh. what a goal. You know, that's yeah. what I, uh, I used to watch. Shane do that, you know. No, I could never do that. I could never get that <laughs> off the ground. But yeah, I've got to agree with you. But you know, I, I, my colleague here forgot the best team out of all of them. Yeah? Liverpool. I oh, mean, yes. He's, he's, he's forgotten about Liverpool. Liverpool. But yeah. uh, you know, in the beginning of the season, uh, when we had a, a look at the, the season going ahead, I said Arsenal have learned from their mistakes from mm. last season. And I think okay. they have. They've become battle hardened. Mm. They know when to get the results. They're getting the results. It's going to go down to the wire this season. You're not going to be like in the PSL where you've got one runaway team and then the rest behind. Mm. You're going to have three or four teams fighting. Aston Villa being the surprise. I mean, they their really coach have has been, been yeah. brilliant they really there. Have been. He's changed their whole way of, of thinking. He's changed the whole way of training, eating. It makes a huge difference. And you can see in the results they're getting, you know. So he's changed everything at, at Villa. But it's going to go close. There are a couple of teams that are under pressure. Chelsea. Oh, but the Chino's under big pressure. Yeah. United. Um, you know that song? I mean, I know where, what's your name? <laughs> they should change it to Let's Them In because, I mean, come on. I mean, he's letting goals in left, right and centre. And you're looking at uh, Chelsea when they held Struggling. Man City 4-4. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Now they went on to lose 4-1. You know, that they scored four goals, four each, I think, in the, the, the South African League in the whole weekend's league fixtures, we'll be lucky if we get eight goals. Yeah. There they scored in yeah. one game. In That's one just game. the difference. I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant to watch. Goals, goals, goals. Have to switch focus now, gentlemen, and uh, look at the uh, women's game here in South Africa. Goals, goals, goals. Well, they're coming. Um, and they're coming not only in the South African game, but on the continent as well from the uh, champions yeah. of Africa, Mami Lodi Sundowns. I have to ask you your opinions on the uh, Hollywood Bet Super League its contribution to the game, and I was seeing South Africa, or well, in this case, Mami Lodi Sundowns, sitting on top of the African continent. Chet, Christine. I mean, you, you look at the corporates coming in, in the Hollywood Bates, and also making sure that the women's football got that support that they so daily need. Mm. You look at the, the, the impact that it has done, you look at the last World Cup. I mean, our girls going into the knockout stages of the World Cup, it's for, it's for the first time it happens. So yes. you look at the league, the impact that it has done to these ladies to give them confidence and how many players that played in this league are now uh, play, playing overseas. So this is what was needed all along. Mm. Because now when we started getting into the PSL, when it was the NSL then, there were sponsors galore. So I think this is what has is, is, yeah. is been missing for women's sport to have corporates coming in, making sure that they uplift their uh, uh, play. 
No. I've, got to, I've got to agree with that, you know, and, and wh what I want to make a, a statement here is they need to take it one step further. Yeah. They need to make a professional league, mm. right. all teams professional yeah. and playing in it. Take it a little step further. You look at England, you look at all over the world, they've got these professional leagues. This is where we need to go. We need to focus, get there. The women have done us proud, gone further in the World Cup than ben, uh, Bafana Bafana, so yep. we need to take it on from you. And, and the beauty of it. African champions in club football, yeah. African champions on the international stage as well. One club. We couldn't be sitting in a better place than as far as the women's game in this development, yeah? One no, club. Definitely. One club. One. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> need, so need, we, need we say more? Don't quote me on that. It's in one club. But of course, Mama Lourdes yeah. I mean, they, they, they're making us proud. Mm. Honestly, they're making us proud. I mean, we, we, we really have to, 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 to usher all the accolades to them mm. because they are taking us back into the map as South African football. So, yeah, they're doing well. Well, they certainly are doing well at Mamilo de Sundowns. And on the other side of this, we'll be discussing Mamilo de Sundowns, but the ladies' team, who, of course, return to the Hollywood Bets uh, Super League, having uh, conquered the continent, and now looking to ensure they conquer the southern tip of the continent in uh, the uh, Hollywood Bets uh, Super League. So we back with more in the way of an interview with uh, Indira, Indira Albuquerque from Hollywood Bets on the other side of this. Welcome back to Game On. Now, let's talk about the women's game. And the women's game in South Africa has moved in leaps and bounds over the uh, last, uh, what, uh, 10 or so years, and especially over the last few years with, what, uh, South African club, uh, currently African champions, South Africa on the international stage, sitting as African champions themselves. And uh, that is, uh, well, no thanks to the uh, Hollywood, uh, Super, Hollywood Best Super League, of course. And uh, I have got the absolute pleasure of uh, uh, introducing a uh, representative from the Hollywood Best uh, team. And that, of course, is a former player in herself in Indira Albuquerque. Indira, thank you so much for your time. And I have to start off by congratulating you on yet another successful season in the women's game. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, it's always exciting to be involved with women's football. Mm. And, you know, I'm not saying that just because I'm a former player, but um, there's just so much that we can do in that space. And um, how commercially viable it, it is becoming. So, yeah. It certainly is becoming commercially viable. Uh, how has the journey been as the uh, title sponsor of uh, women's uh, football in South Africa? It's been an exciting journey, yeah. um, learning every year. Um, I think, you know, the great thing is that there's progression every year. Yeah. Um, at the end of every season, you know, we always have to reflect back and see what we can do differently. Um, and especially being in a corporate position um, yeah. and not actually being physically in the game. Um, there's, there's so much that you learn and ways in which we can, you know, continue elevating the game. So I think after the season, once again, um, we, we're really proud of the teams and we're proud of you know, us as a, as a sponsor um, to be involved in the women's game. Tell us about your goals three years ago coming into the women's game and um, how, how much of that you've achieved. Well, I mean, if we just look at the teams, uh, the progression of the teams and, and the style of play and the, and the quality of the players, I think uh, the, the environment has really been conducive to, you know, really uh, showing the great talent mm. in some of the players. Um, players have been called up to national squad. Um, and then, you know, as a brand, obviously, you know, exposure 100% is, is number one um, for, for the company. But just being able to invest in women's football is uh, one of the, the greatest things, I think, as a company we, we strive to do. Certainly doesn't hurt that uh, a team from the Hollywood Bears currently sits as African champions as well, I'm sure, <laughs> no? You know. <laughs> small things, you know. <laughs> yeah, small things. Um, but yeah, credit goes to Mamelodi Sundowns. Yeah. They did it yet again. Mm. Um, they were the, the, the winners in the inaugural yeah. CAP Champions League. And I think, yeah, they, they've been doing really great with, you know, the support that they get from the, the, the support base, the management staff and the, and mm. the players, definitely. And they return, of course, from the heroics on uh, the uh, continental stage to the uh, Hollywood Best Super League, uh, needing just three points. And uh, it's done and dusted, and the champions once again. But the important thing is, it's been way more competitive this year. Hundred percent. I mean, if we look at you know before the league was established, Sundowns were a team that never lost a game. Mm. It, it was unheard of. Mm. Um, and seeing the progression of the of the games, there are teams now that are really stepping up to the plate. We know UWC is one of them. 
Um, they they beat Sundowns not this season, I think the previous season, mm -hmm. um, but this season I mean we saw Royal AM come to the to the party, um, and you know at the end of the day it's an achievement. I mean you you are beating. African champions, yes. uh, a team that is really well oiled. Um, the core of the team has stayed pretty much the same for a good number of years. Um, they do, you know, get one or two, you know, new players to spice up the team. But if you l really look at Sundowns, it's it's a core team that has been, you know, with the team for years. And I think experience counts a lot when you look at uh, the women's game. So it's been a very exciting season. Um, and uh, next season, I'm sure things might change, but. Well, yeah. let's talk about changes, and changes were made uh, this season, moving from 14 to 16 teams and uh, introducing, of course, promotion and relegation. Let's talk about those innovations and how they're helping to develop and uh, keep the uh, women's game evolving. So when the league was first established, um, the establishment consisted of all, uh, all the winners of each province and then the teams who have male counterparts. Mm. Um, that was the, the start of it. Um, I think the, the plan was to get to the 16-team mark, and before we reached there, there was not going to be no promotion relegation. Um, the promotion relegation then started and you started seeing a lot more competitiveness coming from the teams. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing I should highlight actually is the teams that then uh, come into the season for that first season are never the teams that are relegated, which actually shows you that the teams that are coming in are providing that uh, competitiveness to you know the, the top eight um, and you start seeing how you know players start moving and teams start changing. Um, a prime example is you know TUT used to, it was a, a really top team, um, always in the top five. And this season, you know, with the changes of the players and the staff and everything, um, they did battle a little bit um, through the season. But you know that brings the, the excitement to the league. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think the changes are necessary and. Good luck to the next teams coming in. Now, in talking about excitement and uh, just closing off this interview, I have to ask you, you aren't only looking at South Africa in this case as Hollywood bets and improving the South African game from a women's perspective, but Southern Africa and the Kosafa region at large as well. Look, um, I've alluded to in the beginning, uh, us, our involvement in women's football uh, stretches further than South Africa, as yeah. you've mentioned. Um, I think it's important that we continue investing. Um, it is a very underfunded um, entity, uh, women's football being that. Um, and I think, you know, you know, our involvement of Kasafa is just also just to, um, because as, as a brand as well, we are involved in different African countries. And I think it's important for us to solidify a footprint, but as well as assist in elevating the Southern African teams and competitions that we are able to, to you know, be involved with. So again, also, um, it was our third year being involved with Kasafa. Um, and I mean, every time you watch Kasafa, the, the teams that come, the quality, it just keeps elevating every year. Um, and especially something that we need to take into consideration is that a lot of African countries don't have a lot of the resources that we find, you know, in the European stages and all of that. So um, it's very commendable to see the, the teams really growing every year. It is com commendable indeed. And thank you so much for your time. And thank you at home as well for your time here as we go into the uh, festive uh, season, knowing that there's plenty of football to look forward to from a South African, a uh, uh, English and even Bundesliga uh, point of view. And uh, oh, let's not forget the Hollywood Bets Super League as well. So from myself, Susan Mopena, and the rest of the team behind the scenes here at Game On, it's... Uh, Cheerio until next week.